It's like you going. Why? Why would you buy a five hundred dollar fake chain? Or buying fake likes? Fake on the gram. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. So, so, so nothing about you is real. That shit is that 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 shit is um. That shit's a mental illness. It's called fugazi Azy syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> fugazi Azy syndrome. A lot of y'all niggas got that, man. What's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good? It's your boy, Big Wavy Legend, man. This is the Legendland Podcast, episode 42. 40. Jackie. One. Robinson. Oh, it's 42? Come I'm on. bugging. Come on, Legend. 42. Jackie Rob. What's good? What's good? Nigga said, I jack, I robbed, I have sinned. Oh, man, I'm Jackie, Jackie Robinson. Robinson. But when I run base, I dodge the pin. Hove's a legend. Hove's a legend. Legend in Podcast episode 42, man. We in the building. We in the fucking building, man. How was your weekend, black one? Yo, my week. Your week? And the weekend. Let's fucking talk about it's it. It's a fucking movie. Fuck the- Literally. <laughs> Literally. Okay. Oh, all right. So, you know, tell, tell the people what you what you got going on. Um, You know, that, that Sneakerella just dropped on Sneakerella. Disney+. Sneakerella. Disney fucking plus. I'm, I was very fortunate to, you know, have been featured in the film. That's fucking good. Legendary scene of the film. Mm. Well shot. Well edited. Yes, sir. Well featured. Well fucking featured. <laughs> Shout out Sha. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Shout out to Sha, Sha, Sha Mc... Smooth. Sha McFly. Sha was McFly. Good. Shout out Doc Jr. AKA Eddie Fast though. Doc Jr. AKA my birthday is today. Happy fucking B Day. Happy fucking birthday. Doc Eddie Jr. Fast though, AKA Doc Jr. Yes, sir. So you know, um, yeah, that dropped. It was a pleasure. We did the um what is this the screening we went to the mm-hmm. screening mm. screening was dope it was a lot of good vibes you know i ran into the people i was shooting the film with nice nice you know um same week i'm on set you know i'm on set with the um with the legendary lake keith stanfield lake keith stanfield you know wait wait, wait, wait. so you so <laughs> you just Premier, you just premiered, I just premiered a, movie. a movie, and and in the same week, I happened to be shooting shooting another, sh- another movie. not another movie, but a, a show like a TV show. So, um, these are my first acting roles as well. So, is it safe to say that Mo Bliggity Black is a fucking actor? It's safe to say. <laughs> it's What's safe good? to say. Acting debut has commenced. The acting fucking it's, debut. It's been a it's been a um a dope experience, bro. Oh man, that's that's for sure. That's beautiful, bro. That's beautiful. Just to see that, you know, one of one of your friends is just flourishing in many lanes. In many yes. lanes. I yes. know this guy. This guy's is no 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 stranger to the camera for sure the humble legend man i'm just trying to work like i'm trying to work and stay out the way and and do great things so definitely like i said me taking it a couple months at a time and just you know it's it's looking good we looking to have a um, fruitful summer and fruitful rest of the year we're gonna keep putting this work we're gonna keep making the legend land podcast legend land go crazy legend land what about you bro um you know me, bro. I was I was chilling. I thought I had to work Saturday, didn't work. Woo-hoo. So I ended up hooping, man. Shout out to shout out to to the hood. Shout out to High shout Bridge. Shout out to, to the bridge. Niggas was outside bowling. I was I was like, whoa, this is what I like to see. Feel what I'm saying? Niggas look washed, <laughs> but niggas, you know, niggas was outside. I almost died. Now nah, I almost died, bro. Ran up and down one time and it was over. You was done, <laughs> but you know it was a great experience being out there. Yeah, you know I had I had a um little two on two, me and Don versus Sandwich and Sosa. Um, I just want to say this on camera, Sandwich, you cannot fuck with me. I don't want to hear nothing. It was a rain delay. They was up two, but we had them. We had them eight two. Mm. Me and Don had them eight two, but then. You know, Sosa Sosa had the team on on his back. Oh, yeah, Sosa yeah, had the team on his back. Yeah, he got crazy. He hit a clutch three, mm. and then I don't know how Dave um he he got the heart to hit a three, but 
It was one of them bullshits where it hit the rim, went up, hit the other side of the rim, and then went in. It, it wasn't a, in. it wasn't a skillful shot. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? It was, it was luck of the bounce. But it was, it was luck of the bounce. So it started rain. So it started raining. So they up two. Game is twelve. So it's eight two. They up. They up two. So hopefully we get to finish that in the near future. Um, you know, rain delay. You feel what I'm saying? But it's all good. Um. And yeah, you know, it it was just good seeing everybody outside hooping. I think I'm out of retirement. Mm. I think I'm out. I like that. I'm a hold off on a farewell tour. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Big legend farewell tour, bro. Cause I was gonna hang it up, but I don't know. Cause I'm trash. Like I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, crazy. I'm not gonna say I'm trash, but it's like I just became a lazy bitch, bro. Like. You just ain't moving how you. Yeah, how you, I don't move how you. How, I used how to you move. comfortable moving? Word, but you know. It, it it was good, but other than that, the week the weekend was calm, man. The weekend was calm. Um, I'm bugging. We got the chief editor in the fucking building. Yeah, you know the vibes, man. Three G up in here. Three G Valley. Three G Valley just dropped that music video. Rendezvous, man. She Check that out. Kick it with JJ. I'm saying, shout out, shout out to um 3G Valley. Check out that rendezvous, yes, that sir. rendezvous video. You feel what I'm saying? And you know, we we going up from here, man. Um, let's let's talk about it, man. Let's you know start it off on a somber note. Rest in peace to the legend, to the legend, to the legend. And I'm gonna say legend because he left his mark on. He left his mark on us. He left his mark on the world. Mm-hmm. Kevin Samuels, man. Rest R. in P. peace. Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels. Like, I don't know how he passed away. It was very sudden. But, you know, it was it was a shocker. It was like, wow, damn. Yeah. Alleged, I think it was alleged he had a heart attack. A heart Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they say he was, like, unresponsive in the yeah. crib. And it was just, like, it was, it was just very shocking. And, you know... Kevin Kevin Samuels he entertained a lot of people with his um with his blunt truth because he was very blunt he he was very harsh you know but at the end of the day he is a man he um he, he was a man with an opinion mm-hmm. and it's safe to, it's it's I want to say it's safe to say you know at, in some aspects of you know. His conversations, I'm sure there was something positive you could take from it. Yeah. You know, in some way, like in some way, shape or form. So I think people have to keep that in mind as well. It's like everything, you know, people are not going to always like everything you say. Like everything you say is not the the gospel. You know, it's not. Yeah, everything word so is somebody bond. say is not law. It's yeah, not. you don't got to like every single thing. But there are things within what he says that's like okay that that can be attributed to my life that could be something i'm looking forward to achieving or getting as a goal for me or setting right. as a goal for me you know my thing with him and what i liked about him is he made shit very clear like very black black and white like i mean okay. not black and white but clear like you know, black, yeah. where these these females and just even males like they'll come on the show being delusional and he's like bro this is what society would view yeah like what size are you in clothes to a female, they'd be like, "Oh, I'm an eight. I'm like, well, how much do you like? What? How do you look? Like, rate yourself from one from one to ten. Ten being like, uh, what he would say, uh, Kelly Rowland, and then uh, eight mm-hmm. would be uh, Beyonce. And they'd be like, "Oh, I'm an eight. So, so you look like Beyonce. And they'd be <laughs> like, "Yeah. He's like, "Okay. <laughs> like, you you're cute at best. So you'd be like a number six. So like, he he's he's going like how a man would view you. Yeah. Like, and then people would just be like, oh. Females would be like, oh, I hate this guy, but it's like, bro, he's just saying yeah. what every man would would normally say, like, yeah, and you in know, head. And, and, you, and you and you and you know, like, it was this, I heard somebody say one time about cyberbullying because they were trying to label him as he was bullying people. So it's like, you know, they say if you if you get bullied on the net, turn the computer off. Right. <laughs> you know, 
just, turn, just walk away. You know, yeah, turn turn the computer off or you know, turn the turn um turn your phone off. But it's like with Kevin Samuels, he he's he has he has his opinion on things. And people were choosing to go up. Yeah, and it's like, do y'all did, did do y'all know that if nobody went up on his show, he wouldn't have nothing to say about nobody? And to be to even to, to even say word. like to even go further, like he started off as I can't hear you. You don't hear me? Yeah. You hear me now? Turn it on. It is on. Got it. You get me? Yeah. He he even start he started out as a man empowerment. Like uh-huh. if you watch his older videos, he's trying to help out men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even still, like to like his later days, he was still helping out men. I remember it was this one dude where he was like he didn't had no job. He lived in his mama's yeah, basement. Yeah. Nigga was fat. Like he he was living he he had like yeah. he had mad shit on him. He's yeah. like, oh, bro. <laughs> he like yo bro you son you you gotta like he was basically telling him straight up bro like no get females your together, yeah, get nigga. your shit together bro like so it's not like he's just coming at just females one particular female no he's coming at everybody like yo get your shit together yo bro. he like, yo but he told the dude he asked the dude he said he said he said how much you make a year and then he said i make you know i make a good amount of change he said till be two weeks he said he gets something every two weeks yeah <laughs> he said he said he said he said well, you got a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then he was, then he was like, you know, he's like, oh, what, what? He said, nigga, do you, do you have a big dick? <laughs> it, yeah. that, that that was crazy. But he was like, he basically told him like, nigga, he said, you don't make a lot of money. You got a little dick. What woman gonna, gonna want you? Harsh reality for you people. know the the, the harsh reality. I, I, mm, damn. He said, he said, you got to at least have one or the other. <laughs> yeah, I th- I think I think it it felt like watching all of those interviews. It felt like people were constantly putting themselves in a perfect situation. Yeah, which is like the chances of that is so low, and that's kind of what Kevin Samuels always used to point at. It's just like, granted, you could be a woman over thirty, over forty, whatever, with kids, and find someone for you. You know, but at the same time. The likeliness of it is what he's speaking to. Like, that's not likely. You know, it have to be a damn near perfect situation for that to happen. You know, and in that case, I could understand, like, th- those, um, his opinion. Like, his opinion is formed around that. And, like, a lot of people are trying to be like, well, I'm different. You know, everybody, like, on the show, after hearing them, you know, granted, he's belittling sometimes. Yeah. But, like, they're hearing it and, be- and being like, well, I'm the exception. You know, and it's like, what's the chances that you are actually the exception? Because there are some exceptions, but majority of the people aren't the exception. I mean, my my and, and my my whole problem is how how people were fucking was celebrating his death. People people were celebrating his death, like, and it's like the man the 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 man had a the man had an opinion, and you know, and he was at and at, at the end of the day, he was an entertainer. It was it was your it was your it was your choice to go on his show, and it was you know and if you took to heart what he said then you took to heart what he said like he he don't he don't he don't deserve to be celebrated in that light his death being celebrated Vivica Fox said was you know Vivica Fox said some shit where she you know he had his opinions on things about older women and shit and it's like she said oh well I guess that's karma like why does his karma have to be death. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like I have a real problem. I have a real problem with that, with this, with this generation, and you know, past generations of like we're we're celebrating people's death, and it's like, yo, who like who do like to celebrate Kevin Samuel's death? Who the fuck was he? You know, he, like did he really cause that much damage in the black community? Right. You feel what I'm saying? He did he damage the like did he damage people? To the point where you want to celebrate another man's death and say that that's karma, karma. Because doing that, that don't it, it's not gonna even make your situation better. Like you just have a one less person that's pointing out, you know, what's what's the truth or right. what's what's factual. You get what I'm saying? So and yeah. it's like Kevin Samuels died. Woohoo! You still a six. Yeah, or like, <laughs> who was it? Was it Vivica? Yeah, v- Vivica. Vivica Fox basically attesting to that, saying like, you know, 
he met, you know, he got what he deserved kind of thing. And it's just like, damn, well, if we find something bad you did in the world, does that does that call for your death as well? Because you, you did something that a, a bunch of people may not have liked or agree with, you know? So it's just... No, I look at that too. It's like people people um don't want to better themselves. So like they see somebody trying to like critique, give you constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's the end of the world. So now it's like, oh, fuck you. But it's like, my nigga, I hate, take I, that with a grain of salt. Right. I hate what you I hate what you're saying. People don't want to better themselves. I just feel like people think that they're in their perfect form now. Yeah. Like nobody's fucking perfect. And then when somebody's telling you that you're not perfect, it's, oh, 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 it's crazy. You know, and some of the shit he was saying was real shit. Whether he was talking to men and women, shit he was saying, it was real shit. Right. You, 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 feel, you feel what I'm saying? And, you, sh- and uh, uh, you shouldn't let another fucking person tell you how to live your life, you know, or how, or how you're perceived to the world. Because at the end of the day, I'm there, I'm, and this is, I'm telling you there is somebody for somebody. There's someone for somebody all over the world, bro. Like, it's plenty of fish in the sea. You can't let one man dictate how, how your social life is going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's and I feel like that's what y'all did with Kevin Samuels when Kevin Samuels was just being real. He was just being a real nigga. I don't like some of the shit Justin LeBoy posts. But should his karma be deaf? Absolutely fucking not. I hope he loses wallet or something. <laughs> hope he catch a flat. <laughs> but deaf, hell no, man. Like, nah. shout out to um Justin LeBoy, by the way. But um, nah, man. Like that's that's bullshit, bro. And that's could be your karma, you know. Like people don't even see it that way, but it's like right now that you you know something go wrong with you, it could be that. Like, why are you celebrating another person's death? That's that's ridiculous. Yo, bro. I, I used to love when he used to call Shorty's Big Shirley. Oh, Big Shirley, yeah, he was he was, he was violating. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was violating. He nah, he he was violating. <laughs> but that's what people also, you know, had to pay attention to too. It wasn't. It, it also wasn't just him putting down women, because mm-hmm. he had conversations with men and and was you know telling them harsh reality as well. So, you know, for it just for it to be a lot of women is like crazy because it's like it, he wasn't only just targeting y'all, and you just happen to be some of the women that always came up on his show. You know, he could have had that conversation with plenty of people. Yeah. And I seen him have good conversation with Nikki. He was on um the drink with Nikki. It was it was calm. You know, it's good vibes. So just rest in peace, man. Rest in peace, Kevin Sims, the legend, man. <clears throat> people gotta get they you know people just gotta get treat pe- each other better. Yeah, man. And that's why and it's like y'all down in the Allow level. allow people to be human. Yo, bro. I, like I I hope when, when God forbid, I hope when I when I when I go, bro. A nigga don't be like, yo, thank God that nigga go. That's shit. Yeah. Fuck that nigga. Speak, That's wild. You know, and like, you know, and then we now fucking Buffalo, New York. A motherfucker went crazy up there. It was mm-hmm. a mass shooting. We hear about that shit? This one, they got footage of it, bro. The nigga had a GoPro he went, he, on, bro. He went, he went live on Twitch. Oh, that was a oh, word? He was live. He was oh, live streaming on Twitch. They said they took it down within two minutes, but obviously somebody recorded it. Yeah, he's an animal. But yeah, so. it's footage of it. You can see it. What basically um he had first of all, he had nigger written on the end of the gun. That's one. He had some a bunch of other writing on the side of the gun. I didn't obviously. So you know get to his see you know what you know what his but mission yeah. was. And he went to a predominantly black neighborhood. Mm-hmm, to a supermarket. So basically, they, there's also they said that they found like he had like some manifesto, mm-hmm. like some racist man, manifesto as well. Um, he pretty much was shooting the first people he saw, on top of I believe like eleven out of the thirteen were black people. Yeah, and it was like he was shooting them, and and then not to be graphic or anything, but people were getting shot, and then he was shoot making sure they were dead pretty much. You know, like people were on the floor hurting, and he's just shooting. You know, and crazy, and then what the biggest thing is just like he gets taken away in handcuffs, eight eight cops, you know, and it's like he didn't do anything. It's like he had a fight, you know what I mean? It's just like every time it's a situation, not every time, but majority of the time, majority of the time, that it's a situation with a black man 
or even a black woman. It's fatal. They they dead. They'd be dead in a situation like that. You shoot ten people, and you get to walk away scot free. Like they don't. Black people wouldn't live to t- to say that. Nigga, remember, but remember with Dylan Roof. Dylan Roof, he the one that shot up the he black just church. Finished it. Okay. He, but they fucking got that motherfucking McDonald's. Some, yeah, something to eat. Got him something to eat. What? You know what I'm saying, and it, that that's what we was the like. That's this the disrespect, you know. And that's the like eye opener for people. It should be like, how the fuck do does these situations continue to happen? And that's like I heard that was like uh, up there they racist as well. Buffalo, New York. You know, and it's just like it seems as if they commended him. By just taking him in, knowing like, yo, he was armed and dangerous, and they, there's footage of him like seeing a white person on the floor about to shoot them, and then the guy, I guess, it's just the guy spoke, and he, he was said, like, oh, oh, oh my said, bad, yeah, like what the fuck, like, and then and like the shit was a game, bro. But then like you see shit like this, and then you look at you look at niggas like, um, Antonio Brown, and he fucking says that racism doesn't exist in America. He mm. said that racism doesn't exist. How? What? I didn't know he's. I never heard that. He what? Said. Are you a dude that had the N word written at the end of his gun? Shooting his aim was for black people, but racism doesn't exist in America. Are you fucking shitting me? Mm, yeah. Like, come on, my nigga. Like this. Nah, this shit. This, and it just this shit goes to like. Mean. Even the the desensitizing thing too as well, cause like we not supposed to be we not supposed to be watching stuff like that. Mm-mm. Like it's graphic, but then at the same time you do need to watch it because you can't walk around thinking these things aren't gonna happen or can't happen. Like right. it's so possible that could have been anybody anywhere, you know. And then it's like, what do you do in that situation? He's literally predominantly aiming for black people. He's in a black neighborhood. You could have had family up there. Yeah, and then you just in a supermarket. Like, you just shopping t- to eat and live. And somebody coming in, targeting you, trying to take you out, you know? Like, that, that shit is crazy. And you pretty much got nowhere to run if you go into the... He was in the front. He was, like, literally in the front of the supermarket. Like, what do you do for yourself in that situation? Or how do you better prepare yourself if you end up in a situation like that, you know? The shit, the, the, this shit is disgusting, bro. And it's like... How the f- like I this is what I I don't understand. How the fuck that somebody that killed thirteen people could just be apprehended ha- apprehended safely? It's like they know they're not gonna be shot. Or nothing, something. nothing though. Like it's so, ridiculous. like n- and it was a situation they said when he was underage that he he made a threat in the New York City. I think New York City or New York State Police had, like, I don't want to say investigated, but I guess they, like, was trying to figure out that situation as well. But he just it didn't end up getting charged back then. You know, it was, like, in June or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's just that it's just tough to see. It's tough to know, like, granted, if some kind of justice does happen, it, it doesn't equal to, like, lost life, you know? It's nothing you can do. You know, to get those people, those lives back and their families who's going to miss them and, and have to deal with that video being out, you know? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Shit, it's, shit, shit, it's, it's real. And that makes people think, what are, what, are, what the fuck are they going to do with the gun laws? You know, are they going to just take everybody's gun laws away, you know? And then it's nothing you can do. Like, you're not going to really be able to protect nothing. yourself. And then a motherfucker could go to another state, buy a gun, come over. And to this state and yeah, but and you look, got not, nothing to protect but yourself. Look, what if somebody? What if somebody had? What if somebody had the the right to carry and conceal in Buffalo? Mm-hmm. That it 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 no funny shit. It would have probably went fucking different. It went different. When the last time you heard of a um, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but a, a mass shooting in Florida. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard. I have. I myself haven't heard of one because everybody got it on them. Mm-hmm. So as soon as you start, yo, what you what you doing, my man? And it's you like, you feel what I'm mm. saying? Like, like, bro, like, yeah. I, and it's like, it's it's like it's pros and cons to having like those gun laws being um exercised in New York City. I know. Before y'all go and believe, yo, you bugging, bro? It's gonna be it's gonna be the wild wild west out here. Like, I know. But I'm saying, look what the fuck is going on. Yeah, because you shouldn't have to feel like. 
You shouldn't feel. You shouldn't have to feel like you need a security guard at a supermarket. Yo, dead ass. That's the only way. That's that's the only way you're gonna have to. Um, you you, you could yeah. you could be protected. Mm-hmm. But the thought, like, yeah, the thought of that is ridiculous. You know, like, like come on, bro. You could barely carry a knife in New York. Exactly. You could barely have a knife. Oh, it just. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, how the fuck are we gonna protect ourselves? How? This this shit this shit is insane, man. Like, it would I'm telling it it probably went way different if 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 the gun laws would have been, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Them states, bro. They walking around with it on a hip, not yeah. giving a fuck. So at the at the very least, like we gotta make sure we on point. We gotta Come make on. sure we even know how to sh- you know handle ourselves. Know what to do with something with guns, whatever Damn. the case may be. And it's like and it's like what's the procedure? What's the procedure? Because you know that's what they would do. Or oh, there's the procedure if there's a mass gunman. Here's the procedure. There's no procedure against an automatic weapon. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of Dodge. Move. Run. An automatic fucking weapon. An AR AR fifteen. Like, come on, bro. Like, we don't. You don't even got a fight. You don't have a fighting chance. You don't, especially if you. Going to the supermarket and you not even expecting somebody to do that shit, bro. And the, the, like, come on, the laws gotta change, man. The laws gotta change, man. It's already it's already thousands of guns on the, on the streets of New York. <laughs> it's it's always it's, it's, it's already it's already you, it's already guns. You could get a a gun easier than getting a fucking snicker, and, and you know, not saying that I know how to how to, but. You know it, 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 it like it. That's that's reality. You got all these young kids killing each other, bro. Like, come on, man. This and this, this fucking whatever this, this this dude is, man. Shit is yo. Shit is shit is is heartbreaking, bro. And it's like us as black people, like it just shows that we'll never get a fair shake at nothing, bro. Us as us as black people, we will never feel protected by our government by our laws, because at the end of the day. It wasn't written for us. Mm-hmm. It wasn't we, written for us. And we really got to just, we got to stop accepting the bare minimum, bro. Because right. that's what we get. And then we coast, we coast, we coast. And then something like this happened. And then now we looking for answers. We looking for, you know, shit to change. It's like we shouldn't have accepted whatever it was when it was. Like we knew that certain stuff is not enough. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You keep seeing things happen and happen and happen. It's because we accepting you know, like I said, the bare minimum. But we need to be continuously pushing. It don't stop. If we, if we, that's why I'm like, when, not to get too deep in the detail, but like back when people was protesting and stuff like that, it's like it's all good, it's cool. You know, I understand what it's for, but it's like I want to protest right now. Yeah. When nobody protesting because you gonna protest hard as fuck for two months, three months, and then you go back and then you just got the bare minimum. So it was like, what was the point of that? You get what I'm saying? You done took wild days out your life, not working on you know yourself because at the end of the day you still gotta live and you still gotta yeah. eat and you gotta make stuff happen for yourself. You went and did all of that, and then we still have these things happening. You know, whether it's the terrorist attack, whether it's um, police shootings, you know, it's just like it's because we accept the bare minimum. It's because we don't continuously fight and push. We protest strong for as long as we can, and then you get tired, or you know, you think you did something, and it wasn't enough. It was. It was all for nothing. Not even that. It wasn't all for nothing. But then you end up getting the bare minimum. They go, oh, let's just give them this, you know. And then you think, you know, they name a street after somebody. I mean, yeah, yeah, but it it really it really be all for nothing, bro, because. Nothing, nothing changes. And it's like, I understand you cannot change people. Race, I feel like racism, stop, let's, let's stop thinking that we, we could end racism. You can never end racism. Every, it's somebody somewhere that don't like somebody. Racism is, is never going to end, but to fucking, but we can fucking coexist, motherfuckers. Like, we can, mm. as, as humans, we could coexist as humans. Accept me as a fucking human being. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Fuck, fuck the color. Accept me as a as a living, breathing human being. Like, accept me as a fucking fellow mammal, my nigga. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's the problem because you got dudes gunning black people down like they like they like they're nothing. Yeah, like like they mm-hmm. fucking cattle. Like they fucking, you know? Like, come on, bro. Like that's yeah, man. Like. Is I, I see the, the the fight never stops, bro. The fight will never stop. Mm-hmm. 
it would never stop, man. But let's get off that, man. Our hearts and our prayers are with the um the families that lost somebody in in that Buffalo, New York, man, shooting, man. We we send our love and our prayers, man. Mm-hmm. This shit is insane. It ain't like what's his karma? <laughs> What's what's gonna be his karma? We we we'll see in a, in about three years when they you know that's how I be with these mass shootings, nigga. Remember the dude that shot the movie theater up? What happened to him? What happened to him? They finished him, but come on, bro. Like you supposed to finish him? Then the roof, he got the death sentence, but he gonna be on death row for probably ten years, twenty years. You know, like come on, bro. Like it's like. Yeah. And and I'm not the, I'm not the the type to wish death on people, bro. But come on, man, you take a life, you gotta give a life, man. That shit is crazy. That shit is bullshit, bro. But let's get to um. So Nike, <laughs> Nike bought a couple pairs of sneakers off StockX of their own product, and they turned out to be fake. Mm-hmm. What's the likeliness of Nike buying sneakers and they're, and they're receiving the fake sneakers though? What's the likelihood of that? That's what's the yeah, odds? That's something I saw too. Where it was like, um, how many sneakers do you think they bought? They probably bought mash, but to, they, to find f- a few fakes. I think they said they bought four pairs, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know how many, nah. but they had to buy hundreds of a couple hundred pairs. On top of that, I don't know if y'all remember. Um, Nike's already suing <clears throat> StockX for their NFT program because yeah. what they was doing is taking sneakers and creating NFTs for them and selling them like at whatever retail or like they put a, 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 a resale price on them mm-hmm. and then immediately after the NFT is bought you know obviously you could turn it in and get the actual shoe or you can keep the NFT but immediately after a lot of those sneakers was bought the price of them went up yeah, you get what I'm saying. They jump like from it'd be like three fifty retail, or you know, for the NFT thing, and then it's jumping to three thousand. Mm. You get what I'm saying on certain shoes, like you know, shoes that are already sought after. You get what I'm saying? They going up, so they're being sued right now. But I heard they were losing. That's what people don't know. So that's another thing. Oh, Nike was losing. Yes. Mm. Um, right now too, you also have to look at the fact that um. Stock X knows and they're fully aware that the shoe doesn't come from Stock X. It yeah. merely is co- it comes from a third party person selling the shoe. You get what I'm saying? And they have to authenticate it back. Yeah, the that's the, the thing. thing. That's the thing. Y'all you not know, doing your job on the authentic. authentic end, yeah. Yeah. How have you say authentication? O- authentic- authentication. Authentic- <laughs> but authentication. Sorry. Yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, it's like, how technically is that for? You get what I'm saying? Cause how how much of the shoe is fake, or, or how close you get what I'm saying, or how close to the pair you know to to not have been able to authenticate it properly. Yeah, oh, these UAs is getting too good. Yeah, a lot of people say UA. that as well. Yeah, it's unauthenticated, un- 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 yeah. unauthenticated. Yeah. yeah, I think it's in your sneakers. Auth- I mean, unauthorized. Yeah. That's it. Un- unauthorized. Yeah, that's. So basically, what's going on too that people don't know is that, like. Let's say Nike will go to a factory, right, to produce a shoe that's coming out, you know. Now, all of those shoes have to go through basically authentication or, like, perfection. Yeah. So, like, certain shoes that don't make their cut of quality control are pretty much left in that factory. Yeah. So, it it's not so much that the shoe isn't really a Nike. It's just that it wasn't quality control wise it didn't meet the standard of what they want to put out yeah so that shoe still has to like it's in the it's in the warehouse they still end up selling that shoe you get what i'm saying and that's yeah, how grades uh, yeah but sometimes they're not b grade that's the thing sometimes they just they don't meet quality control but it, it could be really still a really good shoe yo bro like, but legit, my, oh my bad bro <laughs> oh my bad bro nah what i was gonna say was speaking of quality control the new nc ones the quality controller nose is fucking horrible, bro. <laughs> I got my shits. My shits look crazy. Don't get me wrong. They they still the glue, fresh. right? It be the glue. The, the glue. You yeah. see that little extra darker blue on the like next nah, to the white? Yeah, it's 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 a little it's a little scratch on them. Mm. A couple scratches. Like the tag right, the tag that's right here, the Nike tag. Mm-hmm. The shit with the shit is up. The shit is up more. So you see, how I say Nike right there. You would see the words like right here. 
That's on oh. the back of the tab. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, bro, like, I got them shits in my crib. I'm like, yo, got, come on, man. I was very un, um, dissatisfied, bro. Like, the fuck? I got two points. One, did those um black and yellow ones come out? Not the Wu-Tang ones, but the black with the black pollen? toe. The, the pollen, yeah. There's like the, the yellow on the toe box. Mm-hmm. Did that come out yet? No, no, no. All right. So now my oh, thing they call is, like that taxi. shit they call supposed them to taxi. come out two years ago, a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. How all these YouTubers got them shits? So something's either fake or they had pairs li- coming out already. I mean, like, people get the early. It's all. It's all about them connections, bro. But yeah, but two years, bro. I'm. I'm. I'm scared of StockX. But look, look. Let's look at the now. StockX response, right? Mm-hmm. And I've I've shopped at StockX. I I believe faithfully. A lot of my shoes that I've gotten were were real mm-hmm. and 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 in good quality. Yeah. You know, but basically what they said is we take customer protection extremely seriously and we've invested millions to fight the proliferation of counterfeit products that virtually every global marketplace faces today. Nike's latest filing is not only baseless, but also is curious given that their own brand protection team has communicated confidence in our authentication program and that hundreds of Nike employees, including current senior executives use StockX to buy and sell products. This latest tactic amounts to nothing more than a panic and desperate attempt to resuscitate its losing legal case against our innovative Vault NFT program that revolutionizes the way that consumers can mm. buy, store, and sell collectibles safely, efficiently, and sustainably. It says Nike's challenge has no merit and clearly demonstrates their lack of understanding of the modern marketplace. Yo, you read, you read good. Last yeah. episode, I was sounding like a motherfucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, t- but that's also too the nigga punctuation was terrible. Oh, in, in, in the in the, in the yeah. shit, right? <laughs> yes. So Word. don't blame me. I was looking like a <laughs> but, motherfucker. But yeah, like the dumb one Yay! of the things that one of the things that stick out is why the fuck is Nike employees using stock X to buy and sell shit? Hmm. <laughs> that's not weird as fuck. Like close that back door. <laughs> <laughs> just like, that's a good one. Um, what, what was the like? When, I forgot what department the lady was in, but her son was like, "Yeah, sell them <clears throat> mad." The Nike executive, yeah, and using it, her credit card. I mean, that's coming out. If you paying attention in the sneaker world right now, it's it's out there that uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of like reselling has a big place in the sneaker world and and with these brands in the moment. As much as you think it don't, like if you think it's not no direct. Correlation going on, even when Benjamin Kicks came out and was talking. Benjamin Kicks was basically saying, like, yo, well, y'all keep thinking that, you know, I'm getting it from the stores. What if I'm just getting it from the brand directly? And then mm. niggas was looking like, oh, shit. Snitch, bitch. I mean, like, like, yo. yeah, but he's 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 really flexing. Not, not that I'm okay with it, but yeah. it is what it is. But he's flexing in a way that he's like, yo, I've been doing this shit since 2018. The only person that could stop me is myself. So it seemed like the like then they always ask him how's business. He he say booming. booming. Like it's like his, the business is so good that it it doesn't matter what people think they or what people uncover. I I heard somewhere that the sneaker reseller business is like a billion dollar. It's a billion dollar thing. I was like two years ago and they said it was, it was in the, the mic microphone microphone cut. They were saying it was like that was like two years ago and they said that it was like mm-hmm. it was on the the the. the the curve to be in a billion dollar business, so it probably is a billion dollar business. Yeah. Now. But I mean, look, so so StockX, it sucks that people have gotten fake sneakers. Of mm-hmm. course, I think the problem is also stock. They say StockX um customer service is horrible, and like you don't really hear from them for for weeks or two couple days and shit like that. I think that is the the worst part. I know about somebody. It. I know somebody that got fake raging raging bull fives, mm. but then they sent. But they they was able to send them right back. Luckily, you know I've, I've known people to the fucking um to buy sneakers from StockX, right? Not wear them or anything, and try to resell through StockX, and StockX is denying it, saying the sneaker was fake. And it's mm. like, yo, if my if I bought this shit from you, how are you gonna say? Yeah, you get us. That's weird. That's mad weird. Like them type of things, they have to clean up. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know if um, <laughs> you got something. The Celtics eliminate the Bucks. Sheesh. Celtics going to the Eastern Conference Finals. So mm. there will be a new NBA champion. Shout out, shout out, shout out to Boston Celtics. Shout out man. to the Boston Whenever Celtics. Whenever I, like, obviously I'm a part of the Nets, Nets clan, the Nets group. Nets set. If you beat me, you got to go all good. the way. You got to go all the way. Because obviously we was going into it feeling like we, you know, we had at least a chance. You know, and, you know, things happen. But 
for that team to beat you, it's like, yo, y'all ready. Y'all got to be ready. Yeah. Y'all be the contender. Y'all beat the, the reigning champions. And now y'all beat the reigning champions, yeah. But yeah. like before, at, when they just beat the Nets, it's like, yo, somebody was a contender. Now it's like, yo, go get it. And I've seen it. It's like, yo, if they was playing the de- amazing defense they was against Brooklyn, and they're coming and you going against one of the greatest players, and you containing him, or, you know, he doesn't have his partner in mm-hmm. Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton. He played like me. I ain't going to lie. You know, I'm a Middleton. I like I'm a, I'm a middle like Wade's Middleton. I concur. I, th- I thought you would play like well. I was gonna say would you play like Paul Pierce? I mean, he plays like a more athletic Paul Pierce, in my opinion. You feel what I'm saying? Paul Pierce is nice, bro. He's the truth. No pun intended. But um, but shout yeah, out, shout out Boston. Shout out to Boston, man. But yeah, they did stop. what they had to do. They smacked them too. <laughs> yeah, insane. You're not gonna win in the Garden, the TD Garden. But um yeah, stock X is yeah, but I feel like I feel like some 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 is gonna slip through the cracks. And that's every like in you any said, business in any every business. the marketplace, all marketplaces face that. Like yeah. eBay sneakers, fucking GOAT, you know what I mean? Even Flight Club, I've seen issues people having with Flight Club. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna hold you. I don't know which customer service is worse. Instagram or Stock X, bro. Stock X help hold my bread. I saw I thought what it was some Yeezys I sold. They held my bread for like over a month, bro. Oh. Like, I had to contact them mad times, bro. I'm like, where is my money? Like, oh, fucking, oh, fucking cool car. I ordered two hoodies and them shits came in a month and a half. Jesus. Shit. Like, yeah, that type of... So it's like... Shout out to cool car. I mean, like, I'm trying to think about it like this. Like, do you just not buy sneakers? Like, do you just accept... How crazy the game is! Like, yo, if I don't get them retail, I gotta go to something like StockX to try to get them, you know, at a at a decent price. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, then I still gotta worry about if they fake or not. So do I just not buy sneakers at all? Like, do I stick to white ups? <laughs> you know, it get weird. And I know that's what a lot of people dealing with. Like, damn, they get said white ups. <laughs> but yo, yeah, shit is crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, StockX, man, step y'all shit up, man. And Nike, stop being so sneaky. Why y'all, why y'all going over to buy your own shoes? <laughs> like, what, what is that about, bro? Like, they bet they lost the lawsuit. But I'm, I'm confused. Because <laughs> who's I, the sneakers going to? I want to know. I want to know how many sneakers did you buy? No funny shit. That's that's that right there. We needed to use common sense, bro. Yeah. If Nike got a bottom from from Stock X, and the consumer's not getting them. It's all resale at this point. It's going to all the resellers, bro. That's it. It's common sense now. It just made sense to me right there, bro. There's no way Nike not even getting their own sneakers. Yeah. And then I'm not getting them. <laughs> Wave not getting them. No, for real. You not getting them. Who the fuck? They got to be going to the resellers and Yo, that's it. They got to fix that app, bro. Yeah, I don't do. win nothing, bro. Oh, sneakers app? We not even going to get into that. They just dropped the fucking... Um, yeah, the, they the, dropped the no. They dropped Virgil on his site. Virgil just dropped the Canary Yellow Air Forces. He did. <laughs> Look at G. Didn't even know. Off I swear to God. When today? Today? Like two days ago or yesterday? How how you knew? Ain't say nothing. You went for them? Yeah, I didn't get them. <laughs> I, was, I was late too. Shit. You gotta yo like just shit like that. Like you see what I'm saying? I bet you the resellers knew. <laughs> yo, this bro. is why my pledge allegiance is to confirm, man. <laughs> Adidas That's confirmed. Shout out to Adidas. Yo, bro. But I mean, StockX. You know, you know, a lot of niggas is comfortable with buying bang shit. <laughs> when I say, like, uh, wait, when you say that, but for resale, bang shit, bro, niggas are yo, bro. You won't think a nigga would cop a pair hundred dollar fake jeans. No, but what I'm saying is like, <laughs> that's a lot of money for some fake shit. But, but not what, that I know the prices and all that. <laughs> but, shit. but what I'm saying, all right, let's say the threes that just dropped, the Neapolitan shits. Mm-hmm. Let's just say you know willingly that the shits is fake. Oh, you bought them for off a of stock edge for resale. They're going for like three hundred. You know, there's people that buy fake shit. But you gonna buy a fake pair? But of how can you? But how can you tell if all you wear is fake shit? Mm, good point. You feel? <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yo, I re- oh, I honestly think that buying fake shit is a mental illness, bro. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious. Yo. Like you know, you know that it's fake. Who just said that? Was that was that Jay Z? Probably was me. Nah, but Jay Z said something like that. Like oh, I don't want to say I don't want to say exactly it was definitely Jay Z, but I just heard that in in somebody's lyrics. Oh, Wave Z. I feel like they were saying people buying fake shit willingly. 
Oh, oh, I mean, he oh, probably maybe he was talking about something else, but, but that's cur- yeah, that's yo, that crazy. shit is a fucking mental illness, bro. It's like you going, why, why would you buy a $500 fake chain or oh, buying fake likes? Fake f- on the gram, <laughs> that's crazy, <laughs> bro. So, so, so nothing about you is real. That shit is that, that, that shit is, um. That shit's a mental illness. It's called fugazi Azy syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> fugazi Azy syndrome. A lot of y'all niggas got that, man. A lot of y'all niggas are suffering from fugazi Azy syndrome. Fake, <laughs> fake jewelry, <laughs> fake clothes, and and not and 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 content with it. Yes. And then you taking pictures like this. I'm in my own lane. <laughs> People can't do take, like do like pe- mustard and catch up. Pe- people can't take not not being. <laughs> people can't take um not being, being a se- part of being something. separated. Yeah, or like not being, not being in. Niggas, yeah, niggas need to learn how to shop within their means. Like my nigga, if I can't afford it, I'm not gonna fucking kill myself to buy it. I'm not. Yo, let your friends know. Refer them to a doctor, man. Fugazi Azy syndrome is real. It's real, ladies and gentlemen. Fugazi Az syndrome. <laughs> that was a good one, right? A lot of y'all niggas are suffering from Fugazi Az syndrome, man. And then we'll argue with a nigga. It's two stacks, nigga. Shit is two stacks. Fuck is you talking about? You see what I got on my feet? Do you see what I got on my feet? Like niggas will really argue with you, bro. That shit it, it, it attacks the brain. It attacks the brain. It's Fugazi Az syndrome. <laughs> Medicine coming soon. Oh. <laughs> Yo, but like you had you had a you had a um yeah, a I question, couple, right? I had a couple drinks. <laughs> I forgot what made me think of this, but I just wanted to know like how comfortable, right? How comfortable are you with consistency, right? Within aspects of your life. So like your job. Mm-hmm. Are you are you comfortable having like a same routine for your job, even like at the job, the things you do? You know? Um Within your weeks, like within your weeks of life, yeah, you know, are you comfortable? I guess waking up, fixing your bed every day. Mm-hmm. You brush your teeth, you shower, or you shower last night, so you just make sure you put your deodorant on in the morning. You get your like. Are you? Does that comfort you? I mean, some shit like that is um is embedded. It's, it's embedded within your um within your brain. Like, you know whether it's a Monday or whether it's a Saturday. When you get up, you're gonna make your bed. You know, like it's certain shit is embedded. Before you go to bed, you brush your teeth. You know, like some shit like that is is it's, it's embedded in you. Your your routine is embedded, especially if you got a nine to five. Yeah, like you have to like me me being somebody that that working nine to five. Yeah, like my routine is is. Is the same every day. Wake up, take a shower, brush my teeth, put some clothes on. You, you know what I'm see, saying? Like, you know. so okay, right? For me, me personally, I don't find comfort in routine. Okay, like I, I don't want to know. I mean, I don't want to say I don't want to know what I'm like, what I'll be doing or what's, but like, I just had it. It, it slipped my mind. It's just like. I like moving on the fly. I like going off how I feel. Okay. I don't want to know what I'm going to wear today, to, um, yesterday. All right, all you right. You know, unless it's like, I get it, like if it's your birthday or something, you know, you're going somewhere, you have to have something put out for you. But like, just in general, like I don't, I might not feel like the outfit no more in the morning. I might have yeah. woke up on the wrong side of the bed or just like going to work. Or let's say you was a basketball player. I don't know how comfortable I want to come in the gym every day and start with layups. Yeah. So like some days I want to start with the three. Yeah. Like like you don't want to be used to the to the norm. Like with Gigi, like with, with Gigi, I knew Gigi for years, and mm-hmm. he told me this years ago. He told me that um when he gets out the shower, he drives off and he puts his t shirt on first. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it might be weird. So okay. like what like what the f- Ex- explain that G? Like why do you do that? <laughs> yeah. You gotta get, get to on the mic. Get kid. on the mic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you sure with me that I told you that? Yeah, you told me. You told me you you get out the shower. You don't put no underwear, no socks on. No, you you put your the shirt you wearing outside. That's what you put on first. 
This might have been when I was little ass kid. I don't remember this shit. You know, it's crazy. He didn't tell me. Yo, but like I yo, imagine I, that. Ima- imagine that. Imagine, imagine somebody getting f- fresh out the shower. I've heard that before. That's then, so weird. And then you get a, you get out the shower. Then you just put your button up on. <laughs> No, with no, no underwear on, with no jeans on, no underwear. <laughs> like the consistency is not there. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. That's weird. Like I, I don't trust niggas that that would do shit like that. No, nah, I'm yeah. not gonna hold you. I do agree with Mo. Like, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't live in repetition. Uh, Rep- repetition, yeah. Yeah, I can't do that, bro. I do. Like, I I will admit though. I do think there is power in organization. I do think there mm-hmm. is power in a routine. But I, it, it sucks for me when I'm like, I don't like to continue doing this. Like, I was working a, a job at a sneaker store, and you know, you think a person like me is like living the fucking greatest life now. Like, yeah. we, we, a lot of us dream to like be Work in sneakers, you know? Now I'm here, and I'm like, I don't like this. Like, <laughs> I don't like coming here every day. I don't like the, the ruling of a sneaker store, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just knowing that, like, I know. Like, an uh, issue, me being on my phone. Like, if it's an empty store, even if I did come in on my, f- like, if an, even if a person did come in and I'm on my phone, you know, I don't see it being as big of an issue. I feel like people come and they know what they want. It's a sneaker store. I you mean, don't come in a sneaker store for bullshit. Like, you're coming in there for sneakers. I mean, you know, it's just, well, what I'm hearing from you is just, you're just not a nine to five nigga. Like, you just don't, you just don't. Work, you just I'm not saying you wouldn't work in nine to five. I'm just saying like it's it's just not for you. And the path that you on right now, which is you know, which is greatness, it's like it, it wasn't destined for that. Yeah, you're not you're not destined, not for, destined for, for, for the nine. Some people just can't just don't work in nine to five. But even 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 down to like something like your room, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm comfortable waking up days and and knowing I'm not gonna make my bed. You know, and like some people, to some people, that's like weird, you know? Yeah. And I'm not trying to get people to agree on my side. I'm just saying there will be a day where it's like, yo, I humbly, like, I don't think that's important to me. Like, that's not going to affect my day. It might affect certain people's days. To me, it wouldn't. Just like, just like, um, when you get, when you get done eating, you wash your plate out and put it back where it was at. Yeah, like shit like that. You're you're like it's it's it depends on how how you're raised. I'm not saying you wasn't raised that way, but it's saying like the way you raised as as a fucking kid. Yo, when you finish eating, you better wash that plate out and put it back from your mom. Or you better make that damn bed up before you leave this damn house. You know, it's it's all about how you raised. I remember um I heard somebody say um dude that went to Wallow Wallow two six seven. He was in when he when he went to jail. You know, when you go to jail, you got you make your bed up and shit. You got to make your bed up and all that. And then he says somebody was like, "Damn, yo, like you, like you on your jail shit. Like you make your bed up. Like you mad organized. Like, mm-hmm. like you, you, like you got shit a certain way. Like you, where you make your bed? And he's like, "Nigga, you, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. You know." So people, people that would like look at it and say that's jail shit. It's like, nigga, that's life shit. Mm-hmm. Like you suppose like there's some people's where you supposed to make your bed up when you get out of your bed. For me, you supposed to have your shit where you want it or where where it's accessible. You feel what I'm saying? But people, everybody live different lives, bro. It ain't. It's not. It's really. It's not really nothing to it. It's, it's not rocket science. It's just some people roll out the bed and you know get 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 um ready for their day and all mm-hmm. that. Remember, I told you my my my, my college roommate. I ain't gonna say no names. One of my college roommates. The nigga used to just roll out of bed and go to class. Mm-hmm. He clearly didn't have a routine. He didn't. Yeah. But I'm talking about he didn't hit the sink to brush his teeth. Mm-hmm. He didn't wash his ass. <laughs> he slept in. The, he slept in. And it's like, it's not like he he ain't have shit. He slept in the clothes. He that just he made wore those yesterday. decisions. Yeah. He just made those decisions. I'm gonna roll out of bed, put my slippers on, grab my book bag, and get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. A disgusting decision, but. <laughs> it's his, it's it's his life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um. Yeah. It's, that's, it's, yeah. It's just it was just something I thought about. Yeah, bro. It's, it ain't 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 nothing to it. Yeah, but bro. to do it and pursue it. That whole nine DJ to five food? shit, bro. That that shit is wack. That's why we gotta it's get just rid. like jail, bro. Ah, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, that's a little. That's strange. a little extreme, bro. 
What? Like quarantine was the best. The best. Niggas is trying to take your mail. Eighteen months. Niggas trying to take your mail. No, nigga. I'm just <laughs> saying that like, it. That like quarantine made me realize, yo, bro, I'm destined for like, yeah, to be free, bro. Cause being at work, bro, it's like, nigga, I'll be working, I'll be working on my shit, bro. Yeah. Editing nigga, all that this, shit at work. This, this is a product of the, of the quarantine. Thank you. This that shit right here, like, it's this like, is a product of the quarantine. That mm-hmm. shit made you realize, like, yo, I can't, I can't be in one cubicle for eight hours, bro. That that's so I mean, much well, at time least you get wasted, to leave. bro. At least you get to leave. You know, in jail, you don't get to leave. That's a fact. <laughs> so you you get to go. So um, yeah, bro. Like that's just that's just what it is. That's just what it is, bro. You wanna um, move on to the next joint, black one. Yeah. Um. Secondly, what did I have? I had um. Why can't friends work together? Yeah. Yeah. So you wanna elaborate on that, Cuzzo? Um. Just recently. Things I've been dealing with and seeing is just like, I remember doing a gig with a dude that I knew, right? Like, mm-hmm. I knew him. What he needed me for, that gig, he didn't do, you know? So, that's where my expertise obviously came in. And it was just like, if you're looking at it from the outside, you just like, why Why would I really go with this guy to do this job? Even though he's, I haven't heard anything bad, but mm-hmm. it's just like, it's a lot. It yeah. could seem like a lot to do. Boom, we go there, we get the we get there. All right, this is what we gotta do. Practice real quick, practice. Real quick, like yo, we let's learn this routine. And I finished this shit like, yo, I didn't argue not one time at this shit. Like mm-hmm. I'm so not used to that that I was <laughs> fucking surprised. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. These is three or two or three other people that I've not I've never worked with. You know, and it just was so easy to do the job. And obviously, they're not my friends. So it's just like, why when it's with your friends, there's all these arguments. Like, I've personally not been a part of things because I'm aware that these things are going to happen. But I'm just not really understanding and grasping the the fact that you can't work with your friends. Like, is, is ego that big of a thing? Like, does people egos really challenge them? And and why can't people understand like yo when it's just business, I gotta leave all of that. Yeah. Everything I'm doing is to make the business work. Is to get the job done. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with me. Right. It has everything to do with us as a as a whole as a group. That's a fact. Attacking the challenge. So, what is it within friends that is like? I mean, um, in the Forty Eight Laws of Power, I can't tell you which law from the top of my head, but. <laughs> They say that your friends have a tyranny over you. Tyranny, wow. They have, a, they, have, they have a tyranny over you, which, you know, in other words, they're entitled to you. So they feel like you're accessible at any given moment. It don't, it don't matter what the fuck you're doing. And if you can't make it, that's why you get the, oh, fuck out of here, this, this, and that, to where if a person that you don't even know if he tell you that he's busy, he can't do it. It's gonna be all right, man. You know, you know. Next time, next time. You know, it's just it's the sense of entitlement, and it's like you feel like just because they're your friends, you feel like it's whatever. You could do whatever. You could talk to them, however. You they they're gonna do whatever you say because they're doing you a favor as their bro or, or as they sis. And and the forty eight laws of power in this in, in this thing, I'm. Forgive me, I haven't, I haven't, I finished the book a, a while ago. So it was this, it was this, this, um, this king in, in this, in this, this emperor in this empire where the empire, like, is known for the people to revolt against the emperor. So every emperor that that had that they had for a while, they would kill, they would kill it. The army would kill him. So the new emperor said, "Listen, listen, listen, we gonna." We not even going to do this. I'm going to give y'all an option. Y'all could take these riches and y'all could go. Or I'll kill y'all right here, right now. So now they scared because the emperor invited them. Yeah, come on, let's have a big dinner. We're going to have they have a big dinner. They drinking a fucking drinking wine and all this shit. Yeah, yeah. And then he said, yo, I'm going to give you guys. These, now these people are drunk and they're all, they open. They're like, ha, 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 yeah, it's lit. New emperor. We're going to kill him, but it's lit. So 
going to give y'all this option. Y'all can take y'all riches. Y'all can take these riches, take your families, and you can leave my empire. Or I'm going to kill you. You're done. Because I know what y'all do. I know, I know what y'all do with these people. Mm. Right? And if you want to stay, <clears throat> and if you want to stay, it's fine. So whoever left, left. Whoever stayed, stayed. But then he, he, got, he got up with his enemy. He got up with his enemy. It's like, yo, why are we fighting? I don't want to conquer you. you. You know you can't conquer me. You know? No, no. As a matter of fact, I'm, pardon me. As a matter of fact, he did conquer the enemy. He said, yo, I'm not, I don't want to kill you. Let's work together. You know, basically, basically, let's work together type shit. And then they ended up working together and then the empire became richer than ever. And all this shit, and the enemy, his, the person who once was his enemy, became his best friend. You know, so the the people he came up with, he had to let. That sound like um Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Wu like um Tang. Wu Tang. That, that similar to that shit to too. Fuck with. But something, but some sometimes you gotta look at shit like that. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna get nowhere with 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 the people that. I'm with right now. It's it, it, it. Sometimes it could be the harsh reality. I'm not saying that it don't work all the time. It it don't work all the time, but it's the harsh reality. I can't. I. I we not gonna elevate. Yeah. With the with the with the, these the different type of mindsets. And then it's around. like on top of that, right? It's like when you bring that up, like when you mention that fact, like mm-hmm. we can't work together. It's clear. Yeah. You know, people try to look at it like, like no, we we can. We just got to deal with the bullshit. And it's like you don't no, want to deal with the we bullshit. don't. You don't want like, to deal. There's with a world like I've worked and done gigs and stuff with people where I didn't have to deal with that. So yeah. why would I like you know why should I deal with that when I don't have to? But because a person is making me feel like nah, it's just a part of it, and it's mm-hmm. not you know it's not a part of life. Like right. I can move forward. I, there's plenty of people who go through. Like I never have that issue. You know, and it's like um. Like 50 Cent said in his freestyle, love your enemies, hate your friends. Your enemies stay the same and your friends tend to, tend to change, mm. you know? And it's like, and we spoke about, we spoke, we fake, kind of spoke about it like two podcasts ago to where like you feel, you fuck, you feel entitled. Because like I said, if Gigi's making 20, 20 million and I'm making, and I'm making 10 and it's like, damn, why the fuck I'm not making 20, 20 million. Mm-hmm. Feel me? When I didn't fucking have 10 cent. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's like you you feel you feel and you feel entitled to your friends. Like I advise everybody to go read that. Um, go read the Forty Eight Laws of Power. A very, very, very. It's, it, come on, it speaks for itself. From say it's been around for years, and I also advise people to read. Um, I also advise people to read. Um, the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Very, very awesome books, bro. Awesome. And yes, I am a reader for you guys that don't know. I don't, you know, broadcast it, but I do read books. Yes, sir. You feel what I'm saying? It's something that I like to do that I don't have to have. You don't have to know, you know? It is what it is. But um, it's very, I feel like it's very possible to work, to work with your friends. It's just, you just got to set the boundaries. Like, yo, bro, this is a business. Don't take nothing personal. If you're not on your shit, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to come down on you. Or, or vice versa, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's very possible. You just gotta put all all the bullshit aside and actually get the job done. Feel me? Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, nah, but you know it is. It is. It is. man, listen, man. Legendary podcast, but um, <laughs> yo, let's get in. Let's let's let's. I wanna I wanna give some um. Flowers. I want to give some flowers. I want to give some flowers. And, you know, it's something that we, you know, this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart. I love basketball. All of us in here love basketball. Me being the better basketball player in this room right now. You know, (laughs) basketball is life. And it's like, I want to give my flowers to the shooters. To the shooters. And, you know, um... Let's talk about um, some notable shooters in the NBA because you know you always hear Steph Curry, Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, all these other people, but you don't really hear about 
them legendary shooters that been you know that let that shit go. So give me some, mm-hmm. give me some shooters, man. Let's go shooter for shooter. All of us. Pager. Pager Storyakovich. I was thinking about him too. Page. I said Page. Page. <laughs> Page Storyakovich, man, a legend. Sacramento Kings. Shout out Page. Definitely had the ratchet in um live. What live was that? Oh five. five. Definitely had the ratchet in that. Get um, they wet um, they. Um, the first Splash Brothers, so I will say, um, Rashad Lewis. Ooh, <laughs> and and Ray Allen. Yeah. Mmm, Rashad Lewis shit. Cash. <laughs> His shit was ca- and fucking um, I don't know if I was two K eight when it was on Orlando. He was on Orlando. Mm-hmm. His shit was cat. Turgaloo. I was about to say the Hito. Hito. <laughs> the Turkish <laughs> Jordan. Red. Turgaloo. Michael Red. Uh, Michael Red. Taking yeah, my yeah, people, baby. <laughs> I had Michael Red. Now Michael Red was Michael, somebody that I yo, discovered left hand, left handed dude. Yo, Michael Red was scatterless, yeah. bro. Oh my god! You know who was low key that had a jump shot? Who? At back what was it? Two K sixteen. Who? He was, he, um, Jared Bayless. Jared Bay. Oh, okay. Okay. So he was the low key cheat code at two K sixteen. Jared Bayless. I like that. What about my man, Bellinelli? Mm. Bellinelli. He he got a championship jump shot. Bellinelli, I love Bellinelli games because he's calm. He's a role player, but it's like his facial expression never changed. Like he's like he's like this at all time. <laughs> his shit is fucking nylon. His shit is fucking water. You know we gotta mention Big Shot. Who that? Derek Fisher. Robert Horry. Oh, Robert Horry. Robert Horry, man. Put me under pressure. I'm gonna shoot like Robert Horry. Where, where you supposed to be? And just knocking that shot down. You gonna knock that shit down, Steve Kerr. Uh, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr. Legendary. Man. Legendary jump shot. I say Derek Fisher. Derek Fisher because you know he 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 hit a shot that that sealed the deal for the Lakers one one game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know who I was also was thinking about when we first just started? Um Chauncey. Billups. Chauncey, Chauncey Billups. Billups. Mm. You you know what I remember like in 04? Because I wasn't like I wasn't sitting down watching NBA games, yeah. but th- during that championship run, one thing that always stood out is I felt like, if I'm not mistaken, those were some of the first mm-hmm. like five like team that I seen pulling from deep. Yeah. Like I remember seeing Chauncey Billups, and I'm like, yo, he fake not shooting by the three point line. It looked like he was shooting damn near half, and it might not have always been that. But like a lot of the times, I felt like that was something that stuck with me back then that I remembered. Like yo, Rip Hamilton, all of them, but Chauncey obviously more than a lot. Yo, like on the fast breaks, yo, just pulling up. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a legendary shooter. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Eddie House. Eddie House. Eddie House. I'm gonna give you a, a, sh- a shooter that he's not in the A, but he's nice. Jimma. Jimma. For- you know that's my favorite oh, college player of all time. He's real. BYU yeah, he's legend. Killing people in Player of the year. Now. Come on, bro. Yeah. Beijing Sharks legend. I just don't understand why that didn't translate as well. But I feel like as soon as a player like, you know, Steph emerges the way he does and changes the whole game, where you can attempt, yeah. you know, damn near 23 pointers, I don't understand how Jimmer clearly still can shoot at that clip. And I guess maybe they don't want him to be the, I feel like the star of the team or something, you know, because everybody's not made to be a superstar, and he has to play a role. But like, where is there not a role for Jimmy for that to I feel, just shoot? I feel like I feel like every team that he went to already was solidified. He already, like the Kings at that time. He he had like they had Isaiah Thomas mm. from they had Isaiah Thomas, so he had to fight with Isaiah Thomas. In pre- not saying that. Isaiah Thomas baked him, but we know how Isaiah Thomas get. But yeah, you but like, there ain't no place for him to just shoot. But he was on that team for a while, and then they released him. Then he went did his overseas thing. But then he went to, he came back. He went to Chicago. But you already know who was already in Chicago: Derrick Rose and um Jimmy Butler. You feel what I'm saying? And you know they had I forgot who they had coming off the bench for them, but he always was behind. People and then he went, you know, went, went. I think he went to Israel, some shit. And then he came back and then he signed with the Knicks. And the Knicks didn't utilize him at all. And the Knicks fucking needed him. 
The Knicks didn't even use fucking Ron Baker at the time. Remember Ron Baker? Mm-hmm. And Ron Baker was nice. I remember I went to a game at that time and he was like, we want Baker. <laughs> we want Baker. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, Novak. Steve Novak. Mm, double check. Steve Novak was, was a legend. You know who, yo, 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 yo. I remember me and my little cousin Mark, shout out to Mark. We went to a game and um, they was playing the Wizards and then they banged it on, um, banged it on Novak. Crazy, bro. That shit was so <laughs> funny, bro. Um, it's another shooter I can't oh, fucking forgot. Um, Rip Hamilton. We was just talking about the Pistons. Rip, Rip Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. Tayshawn wow. Prince. Tayshawn Prince. Prince. Yeah. Tayshawn Prince had the scatterless too. Um, fuck. It was it's somebody else, bro. Chandler Parsons. Ooh. Chandler Parsons. He his his shit was cash. His shit was cash. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Um. I'm cheating now, but I'm about to cheat. Fuck that. I mean, we could bring Buddy Hill. You know, we know Buddy Hill is like yeah. that. Yeah, so he could have played with the with the Lakers, bro. LeBron was like, yeah, they was talking about that. I remember. Shout out to Mo Black, nigga. We was watching Oklahoma, college, ba- Oklahoma basketball. Buddy Hill was giving Heavy. thirty balls. Left there. You know who else too in college? Ca- oh Carson. My. Carson Edwards. Carson Edwards. Carson Edwards yo, was how, a beast. Yo, yo, I got goosebumps looking at this list I right did now. too just now. Saying, what the fuck? Thinking how about the Carson fuck Edwards. Did we not say Kyle Culver? Mm. How the fuck did we not say Kyle yeah, we Culver? Missed that. Kyle Culver number How six. did I forget the killer? Mike Miller. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. My shoe fell off cool. Spagak. <laughs> what? Oh, how the fuck did we forget JJ? JJ, JJ, Reddick. motherfucking Reddick. JJ, the nah, most. We didn't say JJ. Nah, JJ, the most threes in Duke history. Reddick. Oh my god, how are we forgetting these cats? Petrovich. Petro. Oh, oh, Petrovich. That fucking cook Jordan had forty on Jordan. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace. I heard he. he uh, yeah. Rest oh, in we peace. We gotta bring up um Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. But I mean, he I think, be, I think he, he was, was a three point contest. He was I like, think Larry was, second. I mm-hmm. think Larry was stamped already. He's one of those that you you kind of don't have. You don't have to bring him up. Yeah. Chris Mullen. Oh. Mark Price. Bradley Bill. Cavs legend Bradley Bill. Oh. Bradley all around Bradley Bill. Ice Trey. You know. I think he's, st- he, I think he, he's stamped. He, 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 he's stamped. He's stamped. It's, it's dudes that, you know. That don't get the flowers. Glenn Rice. I used to think Glenn Rice was only a dunker. But he had one of the... Jason Terry. Jason Terry. Very scatterless. Steve Nash. How can I forget my... my? How can I forget... My legend. VC. No, not VC. Uh, you know, VC became a spot became of shooter. He became a spot, but he But you know, he, he de- VC definitely... He got a stamp. He's, he's definitely stamped top now. 10 all time... Well, Probably he probably went down to eleven, but he's definitely top twenty shooters in all, all NBA. But how can I forget the truth? Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce double P. Dirk Nowinski, Dirkless. Oh my God, Dirk Nowinski, shooter, hitter. It just it's just amazing to see like you knew them people, like you knew the shooters. Mm-hmm. Like in the early, you know, before the 2010s, you knew who was white chocolate, who was scatterless. You knew who was going to take the shots. White chocolate. And now it's just so many people that just like white chocolate emerging. Jason Williams. Jason Williams. Yo, I want to say Mario Chalmers mm. because he hit the game winner. It's a, it's somebody that's not in it. Like you said, it's somebody that's not in Mario the NBA. Chalmers. It's somebody that's not in the NBA right now. That you know he's 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 a, he's a New York City legend. Played at St. John's. Went overseas. The threat. His nickname was the threat, but played at Kennedy High School. Has seventy points in Kennedy High School. Where? Dwight Hardy. Mm. Dwight Hardy. That you remember the threat, nigga? We used to come to Nelson <laughs> and hit fifteen threes and bounce. Ten threes and bounce. That in the game? Yeah. In the game? Mo. <laughs> yeah, nice. Mo. That nigga's fucking nice, bro. Cortland Cortland at finest. That's tough. Bro, that nigga's nice, bro. See, my thing has been, right, when it comes to like shooting and just paying attention to the game now. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to go 
15 for 15 from three. Yeah. It's another to go 15 for 40. Mm. You know what I mean? 15 for 38. 15 for 50. Yeah. Not that's a lot, though. Who's putting up that many threes? But it's just like, do you even get a chance sometimes, you know, depending on how, like, who you are? Mm, Danny Green. Danny Green, yeah. But, you know, he's still he's he, still making. Yeah, he's stamped. He's still making waves. But I'm just like, I've been thinking about that a lot because even point-wise, it's just like on how many attempts, you know, looking at looking at double-A teams and how their game style was compared to my, my division's game style, it's like they play so up and down, the shot attempts per game is up. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And granted, that could have killed you, but honestly, it could have worked for some, you know, some people in my division. Like, just being able to be free, low-key, to find, like, to get in rhythm, you know, to to um get those attempts out so that way you know I I got to I know how I got to shoot I know what I need to do and eventually you 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 going to hit more I'm not going to hold you these white kids they was already on to them d- shooting crazy like you know yeah. back in the day now these new young white kids is wilding I was playing ball with this Jamal this. Crawford Mm, oh, yeah, Jamal, Jamal Crawford. How can't you forget about? Can't forget I was how you forget about Marley? Kid. He was like, he got in like seventeen, eighteen, bro. Coming up, pull up. I was like, yo, your favorite player is Stephen Curry. He's like, nah, Kobe. Mellow. Like, oh, hey, wow. he heard you. Mellow. Mellow. Hello, mellow. Stay mellow. How I didn't say Manu. Ginobili. Mm-hmm. Ginobili, man. That's a good one. I remember Gallinari had his run with the threes. Remember yeah. Gallinari? Gallinari was legendary. Was he on the Hawks for a second? Yeah. He's still on the Hawks. He's still on the Hawks. Right, right, right. So Vince Carter is actually... What? Oh, he's actually number six on the list. Mm, see? Do they have this in order? Yeah, they do have it in order because Steph Curry's number one. James Harden is number three. James Harden, yeah, regular three point leaders. Like, it's, it's, um, I'm bugging. It's Steph Curry. It's Steph Curry, Ray Allen. How many forget about Clay? Clay, Clay. But he's stamped. We know Clay, Clay 47 is stamped. <laughs> you got Clay. <laughs> you like that, right? Clay, Clay 47. <laughs> Chill, Kerry Linko, Kerry Linko, oh. Kerry Links, the original AK forty seven. Yeah, yeah Kerry Linko, he had he had that shit. Um, how the fuck? James Harden, man, <laughs> he pissed me the fuck off this playoffs, man. And you, okay, I'm sorry. No, you said you said you said he left. He left. He left. He the he, net ship. To go sink another ship, he, in yo, Philly. bro. He 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 jumped one ship. He to jumped sink ship another. to sink another. That's what you say. He jumped ship in in Brooklyn to sink another in Philly. Like, how do you do that? Like, what, like, like, what the fuck is like Harden, man? Even in B saying he's just that's just not who he is anymore. It's ridiculous. Like, did you not just didn't he just go for thirty? Exactly. He just went for thirty. It's easy. For you, you telling me you was only capable of doing that? Once, these is dudes, out of your two two rounds of playoffs, and this is a dude that that's getting forty point triple doubles, sixty point triple doubles, just last year. What right was just last year? You was fucking dominating these motherfuckers. Yeah, but now you the same nigga that hit a fucking a, a game tying three on like four Warriors on you. Four, and then and I understand you know people saying shout out to my son Joff. He keeps saying. The hamstring, it's the hamstring. Nobody want to hear that, bro. Nobody want to keep play with that. a cracked eye, bro. You just went in. You just went a whole summer. Like, what are you doing in the summers, bro? Like, are you just not taking care of yourself? Yo, bro. Yo, bro. Uh, the and hamstring he, was an issue last year. Yo, and B played with a with a cracked eyeball. Mm-hmm. Ain't a fucked up. Ain't a fucked finger. up thumb. And you can't get forty for my niggas. So you, so you. So now this nigga has to um risk his health. He has to risk his health for you. Cause you can't show up. This shit is insane. This shit is insane, bro. Like, 
Pardon, man. You, you need to step it up, my nigga, because you bugging. Yeah. You bugging out, bro. This and is- I don't want to. I don't want to be like a. You know, just a down to him. I just. It's just like. The narrative It's like seeing you Celebrating you Being a top 75 player And being like Of all time Like They're crowning you And then you You proceeded to go out And and Show that you didn't deserve You may not have deserved it Like did you really deserve it yeah. People are questioning now Like I mean eh, I mean he's still He's He's stamped to a point But it's still like Yo are you da- Are you are you is your run over? Like, are you just done? It might be up. Like, I not understand you trying. You want you you might want to change your game up, but the, this 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 was not the time to do that. <laughs> this was not the time to do that, bro. But even changing your game up was that like, have you not you you didn't even assist better? You know right, what I mean? right. And it's not you wasn't even being aggressive, son. You wasn't like, playing defense. You letting PJ Tucker beat you baseline to to get an open layup, and you didn't even contest it, like. Just those things, the effort. That's what people didn't see. We didn't see effort. Whether you got 20, 40, whatever, you had no effort, bro. None at all. And this is the team that was welcoming you. This is the team that was like, we're ready to to, to use what he has to offer to, you know, fucking help us compete. And you did nothing. Like, you you, you did nothing after that, that 30 game. 11 points in the game seven is unacceptable. And took two anyway. shots. So, you that, like we said, no effort. You took two attempts in the second half. Made, missed both of them and never took another shot. It's something wrong. And, they, and that was the same um, attempts that fucking Ben Simmons had. It's something wrong. Something got to be wrong, man. But Harden, I'm, I'm, st- I'm still room for you, bro. Let's, let's, come on. Let's get it together. Let's get it together, my nigga. Damn, deteriorated was is, is, is a tough word. I mean, basketball years, bro. Unless you like LeBron, where you take I mean, care of your body. It's you not sh- always about the, about age either, bro. Because Chris Paul, thirty seven. Yeah, there's a lot of older, yeah, but, older players. But he's, he's playing the best basketball of his life. But that's what I'm saying. He, you see, where he's he taking care of himself, doing different things. This I mean, nigga, yeah, we, I mean, harder we, than going to strip clubs, bro. I mean, we don't know what he do on his personal, on his personal. <laughs> he was time. Getting, he was losing, he was gaining weight on purpose so they could trade him. I don't. We don't know that. We I mean, know we, that. we see he was, he was like thirty pounds overweight. And then he just lost that when he got to the Nets. Oh, I heard he had a fat suit on. Nah, he stopped. Nah, but we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know those things. So we don't want to put that. We don't want to put that in the air. But um, my nigga, Bowden, you wildin', my nigga. This has been another episode of the Legendland Podcast. Make some fucking noise, yeah. <laughs> You could, yo, you spelled my name wrong in in the in the, in the episode. When I when it, when it's follow me on Instagram at Big Wavy underscore Legend B I G W A V E Y underscore Legend. legend. <laughs> Moving too fast. <laughs> Mo Black underscore. You already know M O E B L A C K underscore. Yo, you can follow us at the Legendland Podcast. Spell at the Legendland Podcast. Um, keep sharing to your friends. Yo, yo, I I appreciate all. Comment the, the shooters. Comment, yo, comment some shooters, some some forgotten shooters in the NBA, man. Comment them shooters so we could talk about it some more. Um, yeah, shout out to um Forever Young by Ron was good. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> um, in control was good. In 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 in. In control. Make some clothes, man. <laughs> Make something. God damn. <laughs> Shit. Shout out to Keep Off the Garden. Put you in that fucking garden. Shout out to the Hillers. Shout out to Hillers. Posh God. Posh God, what the, up? The fucking general. The fucking general. What's good? Shout out the fucking general, man. Shout out to the fucking general, man. Shout out to Camp. Shout out to Legends Camp. Legends always. Camp. Joff. New Jiggy. In. Dab. Dab, what up? We in the fucking building, man. Um, shout out to Dead Stock Dab. Dead Stock Dab. Yo, follow that. Dead Dead Stock Dab, man. My boy's doing his thing, man. Shout out to shout out to my nigga Mac McFly, man. He he cooking up that 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 Legends shout Camp Mac, anthem, man. man. You feel what I'm saying? Mac was good. Um, shout out to the Waffle Crew, man. Shout out to the Waffle Crew, man. Much Sh- more to come, man. Sonic Shy. Thriller. Thriller. Got to focus. You got to focus, man. Doc Jr. Happy fucking B-Day. Astro. Astro. Jono. 
Kitty. Kitty. Kid the Wiz was good. On. On Star. AKA. It's about community, man. <laughs> Talav. Ta- ta- Talav. BJ. The real Talav. The real Talav. Oh, it's another Talav? Nah, that's, that's what you go oh, by. All right. I was about to say. <laughs> 21. Shout out to two dope brothers. Two dope brothers. Mark Ski. Kid Break. Kid Break. Yo, Kid Break. Yo, Kid Break. His birthday was May 1st. May 1st. He turned 13 and ain't lose a battle yet. This nigga won every tournament he has into it. So he been nice for 12 years? Yeah, Even no. he was a baby? No, I'm saying since he's turned 13. Like his last few battles, he's won. And these is real and deal. And these is. These is real deal battles. Yeah, these is like you got to you gotta advance. Mm. So it's like a, it could be a group of 16, group of eight. Mm. And he and he's winning, you know. So salute to him. Shout out Kid Break. Shout man. out to Keep Kid doing Break, your thing. man. Shout out to Two Dope Fred. Shout out to Two Dope Fred. It's the Kid Nas. Hip Hop Kid. Yo, pull up, Fred, man. We need to have a conversation, man. <laughs> need to have a conversation man we need you know we need to finally meet man hearing from old black you i heard you were this a a stand-up dude man let's have a conversation man bring the kids man we're gonna have a conversation man shout out to my bro mark ski you know shout out to taylor taylor gang she's she's dead nice Mm -hmm. she's dead nice um shout out to um it's the gamers legendland gamers stay tuned man follow us at the legendland gamers we got some shit going follow on. Follow that, man. follow that, follow, follow that. Follow that up. <laughs> Shout out to my bro Rick Flair, man, the legend. You feel what I'm saying? We in the building. Um forget anybody. Base God. Shout out to the base Shout God. Out base God. Um whoop, 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 swag. Whoop. Oh, we even talk about Kendrick. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm gonna listen to the album and then we gonna We're gonna get back next week. We're gonna, we gonna get back to Shout that. out to Kendrick though. That that the heart, the heart part five. That we cry together is fucking crazy. The heart part part five with him like changing faces and stuff was so crazy. Mm. And I think just that Nipsey verse, like that verse from his perspective, you know, to like his family, to his wife. Mm. And just I think that was such a way to honor, you know, like as a rapper, you probably been thinking about that too. Like, how can I do something for, you know, Nipsey and Nipsey's family? And I just I did it that way. Let them see his face. Rapping again, that's like a breath of fresh air. And that's like some sh- type of shit he'd talk about. Like, I, I really do believe that was Nipsey's perspective. And I know mm-hmm. Kendrick knew him personally. So definitely powerful way, way to tribute for sure. Legendary, man. Shout out to, you know, shout out to, shout out to my name. Yo, shout out to all our supporters, man. Like, thank y'all for sharing everything on Instagram. Um, I just, yo, please subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel like comment and share please comment comment what you like comment what you don't like comment if you know if i'm wilding you know just you know we want to interact with you guys you want to see what's up man and everybody and everybody that got something going on just keep going because we are (laughs) legendary podcast baby episode 42 you know how we do for episode 42 doug (laughs) <laughs> Dave Dave a- Dave aka Sandwich Trash nigga I only said that Cause my son um, Big Sean He kept co- co- um, Correcting um, This nigga On, the, on um, his podcast mm-hmm. Nori he was like 4-2 duh Yeah You gotta get these names right My nigga <laughs> <laughs> He was fucking the names up Oh yeah What's good